Today we'll be demonstrating how Sentinel-1 can be used to secure resources running within AWS's new EKS Anywhere service. For our demo environment, we have a vSphere cluster, which consists of two hosts, an Ubuntu admin machine, which is the VM we're currently using for this demo, and an EKS Anywhere cluster that consists of three masters and three workers. Our EKS Anywhere cluster is protected by the Sentinel-1 Kubernetes agent, which was installed via Helm. The S1 Kubernetes agent deploys as a daemon set, which ensures that the S1 agent pod is deployed to each node in the cluster. Note that even though this S1 agent is deployed as a pod, it's fully capable of protecting not only other pods and containers, but also the worker nodes themselves. If we take a look at the policy in use for this demo, we're going to be using a detect only policy so that we can see all of the engines at work. Moving over to our sample application, DBWA, we use the command injection module. The text box within this module is susceptible to command injection. The intended purpose of this text box is to take in an IP address as input that the application can then ping and return the output for the user to see. However, the code isn't properly sanitizing its inputs. And because of this, an attacker can append uh, via concatenation characters, such as the semicolon or double ampersand, uh, any command of their choice. And the application will accept that as its inputs and execute it. So we'll click Submit to send our attack on its way. See that that's in progress. And if we move back over to the Sentinel-1 management console, we'll switch into incidents. And we should see several alerts here that were produced by virtue of executing that uh, external command, that script. So we'll click into this bottom incident. And when we do, we can see the threat details. We can see its current status, which is not mitigated. And again, this is because we're running with a detect only policy. If it was a protect policy, it would be a very short demo. We can see information about timing, some prevalence information, other high level details, such as the process that was responsible for this alert uh, being determined as suspicious, the path uh, to this uh, shell binary uh, that's backing the process, the command line arguments that were used when it was invoked. And if we scroll down, we can see more information about the endpoint that was uh, that made the alert, and also a Kubernetes tab that gives us additional context. So we can see, you know, from that alert, which cluster was involved, EKS Anywhere cluster, which node within that cluster was affected, the namespace that the container was running in, its controller type, uh, more information about the pod and all of its labels all the way down to the container level details, its ID, the image that it was sourced from, and its name as it's running on the worker node. On the right-hand side, we have high-level threat indicators that uh, ultimately tell us why we dubbed this to be a suspicious event. So we can see details like exploitation, this acted like a web shell, uh, info stealer, privilege escalation, and many other details, and also their associated uh, MITRE tactics that are linked out to the attack framework for more information. To get deeper details on each of these individual threat indicators, we can switch to the Explore tab. And here we can see a full process tree of all processes involved in the storyline of the threat. Storyline being a related set of processes that are, well, of course, related to one another uh, that form this malicious threat. So we can see everything from the time that the container was first spawned, which is the entry point calling main.shell, all the way through to the current state of processes over here on the right hand side. Our focus was the shell process that we saw in the overview tab. 
So if we click it, we can see its details here on the right. So we'll recognize our inputs that we gave to the DVWA application and how they were invoked. So the system used shell to perform a ping on our input, 127001, and then our concatenated command in behind it, which we could see graphically, make this a little bigger, uh, here behind the shell process. So the, what was expected of the application was just the ping, but instead it got this additional curl command, um, a chmod command marking the script is executable, and then another script uh, being executed by bash. And then of course all of its children, uh, this Python process that is actually invoking a obfuscated uh, base64 encoded string, which is a reverse shell in reality. Um, and then you know many, many other details that you can peruse that back those high level thread indicators that were seen uh, on the first page. Now, once we're convinced that we want to mitigate this threat, after reviewing it, we can go to the actions and mitigate ex mitigation action. Click kill and quarantine. And this will kill all of the processes highlighted in red in this malicious storyline and quarantine any files that were dropped to the system, such as the script.shell and even this uh, meltdown.zip that was used to do uh, privilege escalation. We can also mark this as resolved, some built-in incident handling, and mark this as true positive. So we'll do that and click apply. When we do, we'll see that we have uh, some toast messages and that our mitigation actions are now being signaled to the agent. So as soon as the agent checks in, it will grab the job and invoke a kill again on all of these processes, which in our case, since it leads back to the entry point uh, for the container, this main.shell, um, should mean that the container will be restarted. So we can see our progress here. The, the kill was fully done, uh, killed 198 processes. And if we want the report, uh, we can you know, highlight on the report. Likewise for quarantine, we can see uh, how many files were quarantined, so 72 out of all of those, and how many files, if there were some that could not be quarantined, we can click the report to see uh, the reasons why. Most times it's because those were temporary files uh, and they could no longer be found on the system, thus they couldn't be quarantined. So again, since we uh, killed the main.shell process, that means that the container should have been restarted. And if we come back to our app and try to click, notice that the app is prompting us to log back in. And if we do, we'll note that we are running, or it's prompting us to reset up the database once more. Uh, so we are running within a brand new container um, that's you know, free from having been exploited. And in the meantime, if we want to come and review any of the past uh, forensic details for that storyline threat, all we need to do is follow the storyline over to deep visibility. And we'll be able to see all of the details uh, that are regenerated from the telemetry that was streamed to the back end. Okay, that's all for the demo. Thanks for watching.